and welcome to Wrestling and Everything Coast to Coast. This time, it's just myself, Buddy Satello, but I've got good old friend Casey Wood here, and we brought our other his other friend on, uh, Greg Fomal, is that correct? Fomal, close. Fomal. Um, and uh, we're going to talk, the, these guys are both in the great state of, uh, uh, well, you're in Oregon or you're in Washington, or are you in both? Oregon. Well, you guys are both in, in Oregon. That's fantastic. So this week we have a very special episode because we're going to talk specifically Pacific Northwest Wrestling, which I've always had a fascination for. And and Casey and I go back to the early days of All Pro Wrestling, which was where we both got our start in the ring uh, over in Haywood. Oh, you even got your APW you hat. <laughs> my, my, my old T-shirt fell apart years ago. Uh, you know, one wash too many, and they weren't the, the best shirts to begin with. But, uh, uh, you know, rolling. Magazines too. Oh, wow. Those are some great yeah. ones. Yeah, the newsletter. The, 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 or the programs from the, from the shows. So welcome, Greg, and, and glad to have you back again, Casey. And, and I'm just basking in the glow of a Golden State Warriors uh, first-round victory against the Kings. So it's all good. And uh, uh, so welcome to the no show. Yeah, so welcome to the show. So um, I've always been really interested in Pacific Northwest wrestling, um, especially uh, Casey. If you can, you've got you know you're you're a belt collector and you've got the belts from Pacific Northwest wrestling, and and uh, it was always a the the guys that fought in PNW fought here in the Bay Area as well. It was sort of like they would do a circuit. They do LA, then they do NorCal. And then they would do uh, Oregon. Okay, Piper. Yes. Yes. So we had a lot of guys that were, that were you know, that, that worked cards down here, then would work PNW up north. So, um, it is. yeah, tell me about you, you, your guys' history with Pacific Northwest Wrestling, when you guys first saw it and, and, and all of that. Well, I... That was the thing that I wanted Greg to be on the show about it was because he actually went to the sports arena when I didn't actually get to go to that arena at the time I was a little uh, little kid. He's older than I am. <laughs> Barely. But he, but he, yeah, I know. But he would tell me the stories about walking into the, the arena, you know, the smoke-filled arenas back in the day when there was a spotlight over ring, no pyro. Uh, he said there's a big uh, painting of under the giant, I think, on the wall when he walked in. And yeah, no, it, it was super cool going to the arena. You it was know, a vibe, we, right? We, yeah, oh, yeah. You, you go down there, I'm standing in line with my parents, you know, and, and they weren't wrestling fans, but, you know, when your kids are into something, your parents kind of go with you. And uh, I was fortunate Not enough. Some parents, that. but yes, uh, in uh, theory, yes. Some parents, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was very fortunate that uh, they said, okay, cool, you want to go watch wrestling, let's go watch wrestling. So, um, you know, I, I saw the Portland Sports Arena in its heyday, you know, in the uh, early 80s, you know, back when Rip Oliver and his clan were ruling it. And Billy Jack, you know, Billy Jack, before they forced him to be Billy Jack Haynes. Uh, I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking, you know, real deal Pacific Northwest wrestling back then. And, you know, there was no merch tent back then. Your merchandise consisted of uh, eight by ten black and white glossies that uh, you could catch a baby face signing for you. Otherwise, yeah. they had uh, the heels. They already signed them, and you just had to, you know, buy them. And you, they, they weren't sitting around waiting to say hi to you. Yeah, now you mentioned Billy Jack Haynes. He was one of those guys that um, I'd always heard about and was always fascinated with. And um, uh, he didn't really make many appearances in NorCal. He was one of the guys that just stayed mostly in in – uh, uh, Oregon and Washington. He didn't kind of travel too often down yeah. here, but he Florida, was pretty legendary. Florida and Texas a little bit. They, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, 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 definitely made his way. For a while. he was pretty proud of, of his heritage being an Oregonian. I mean, we, we saw him on national shows, you know, uh, later in his career. It said Oregon across his butt. And I mean, he was, he was real deal Northwest guy. Yeah. Yeah, and so did you see him in any really great matches while you yeah, were up there? Yeah, I sure did. You know, it was uh, Billy Jack was who you went to see, right? And uh, the the guy was was a monster. I mean, you think about yeah. a, a eight, nine, ten year old, you know, standing next to him, waiting to 
waiting for him to even look at you. I mean, he was huge um, and bigger than, bigger than life, you know, with that flat brimmed hat of his on and just, uh, just <laughs> yep. a monster, monster of a man. He was a big guy. Really needs to see it. I mean, he was he was our Hulk Hogan. I mean, that's that's a fact. Exactly, he was our Hulk Hogan. Always had the crowd pop, and you know, you wanted to go see him beat up Rip Oliver every Saturday night. Right. <laughs> that was like the or thing. Or play by Buddy Rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he latched that full Nelson on you, and I mean, he 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 sold it yeah. so much, and I'm sure whoever was the recipient of that. Went home and rested their neck with some ice because you know, <laughs> you know, K favor not whatever. I mean, he he latched that thing on you. He he put it on you hard, and you could tell that it, it wasn't comfortable. Did you <laughs> watch him uh, join the WWF at the time? And and why do you think the WWF could never really do anything with him? <laughs> um, you know what, B Billy Jack Haynes was was real pushy about money. I think that he's even said that. You know that he he never got paid what he thought he was worth, and and he would find yeah. out certain people. I mean, these are all things that he said in his shoot videos, but that a lot of it had to do with money, and you know, and he he wanted his character to be his character, and Vince McMahon, of course, he's in charge, and he wanted him to do his his thing, you know, and he he never was a main eventer in the big part of his career um, when he got to the national, to to uh, up there, so. You know, I think it and was he all was pissed that, too because he was supposed to be slotted to wrestle uh, WrestleMania three with Ricky Steamboat for the Intercontinental Belt, and Savage got. Our, Steamboat jumped in for Savage, and they got that main event. So he worked with Hercules, who we love, but he was pissed at Vince for promising certain bookings, and then shit got changed like overnight. He's like, I thought I was going to be, you know, winning the Intercontinental Belt. No, you're not tonight. But you know, and there was some some uh, disclosure from him also. I think watching one of those that that he did have some heat backstage with a lot of the other talent. You know, he he wasn't to be messed with. He he didn't like ribbing. He wasn't that guy. He was there. It was business. He was he was a real life tough guy, and he was he was you know he yeah, he didn't he get would. along. He didn't get along very well with everybody else because he didn't tolerate the BS backstage. Yeah, he he beat the crap out of a few people. <laughs> Watch his yeah. shooters. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, uh, did you guys go to? Did you guys go to shows together? Did you go, go to, to any shows? Uh, attend them both. Seaside, we did. Yeah, yeah, we went to the Seaside show a couple of times, and then we yeah. ended up at the Memorial Coliseum when uh, Hulk Hogan and King Kong Bundy were the uh, the main. And uh, yeah. you know, they, they, these pictures. were all dark matches back then, right? So you. Uh, mm we saw Hulk Hogan press Bundy for the first time, right? Ever, which obviously wasn't ever, but, but as far as right. Casey and I were concerned, we, we witnessed it go down and it was history and we we're going to never live this moment again. And uh, it was, it was pretty cool seeing that, that show come through, but yeah, we didn't, we didn't see a lot of shows together. Um, but boy, we watched a lot of them on the TV and the tapes though, for sure. Did you guys also get to see Piper do a lot of stuff? Um, I never saw Roddy Piper live at any of the stuff I went to. He was supposed to be at uh, Iwako one time when I went, but for whatever reason, he was on the bill. He just didn't end up showing, and I think they just kind of corrected it with some uh, grub match following that. But I was a little bummed that Roddy wasn't there. But um, I don't know if, Casey, have you have you seen Roddy in, in, in real life? Yeah. Um, geez, I don't know, two or three times we hung out. Um I was just going to show have it somewhere. You remember Piper's Pit Stop when Lynn Denton and him had that transmission store they had together? Piper's Pit Stop yeah. up on Division. Yeah. Yeah. He's right down the street. I have his card here somewhere. But anyway, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. I went with Piper a lot. Oh, hi. hi. That's the business card. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Wow. Piper's pit stop. And, uh, and, and, and there's a uh, lens uh, phone number on the back. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, but uh, cool we used to go. Fake. Yeah. But yeah, I hung out with Piper a few times. Um, always a fun time. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting that Piper was so connected with Oregon, considering he was from Canada and he didn't. Yeah really have 
a solid. He loved yeah. Oregon. Yeah, he did. Why do you think he loves Oregon so much? I, I think that his uh, missus um, uh, was Kitty. from the area, and they, they yeah, had Kitty. a son. His, yeah, they have a son. His, his last name's Tombs. His his son's an MMA uh-huh. fighter. They Cole Tombs, very accomplished. Yep. Smaller, smaller fighter, but uh, they, they've got a lot of roots in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. And, the, the, you know, I've always found that there is this kind of just, it's interesting because you're not the largest market, obviously. You know, uh, uh, Portland is, it's a good market. Portland is so underrated. That territory was so underrated. The best talent went through Portland. I mean, you can name drop all day long about the people that came and went through Portland. Right. Who made, you know, made it to the big time. I mean, from Kerr Henning to Piper to Ventura, you all day long you can say names, but yeah, yeah, you you it was bon rated. Bon X were here, you know. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I mean, nobody they, didn't they even notice that, right? You know, they they say that I, I think I read somewhere that 52 years Portland wrestling was televised on KPTV. And that was the longest running television, non-news television show in history in the United States. 52 years. Um, before it oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that Portland was such a great territory? What made Portland such a great territory when maybe, say, you, know, you don't hear the same thing? For, it was a great market for the boys because it was – short travels like they could wrestle in hillsborough one night Legrand one night they could be home you know salem wherever you know seaside and they can go home to their wives and not be on the road for like days and days so it was easy travel for those guys and back in those days a lot of territories you drive literally you know hundreds of miles a night for 50 bucks in those days portland was Always known, and Don Owens was known as a great payoff guy too, as well. So the boys like that, from what I've been told. Yeah, there's there's a lot of venues in in the Oregon and Washington area. I think Casey nailed it on the head there. It's just every night, you know, you're you're within a hundred miles or fifty miles of of you know right. work. So it was, it was it was good. And and historically, I think that uh, I I saw something about this show Casey and I watched that Don Owens was a, was a generous promoter as far as pay went. Are you talking about yeah. uh, Tales from the Territories? Yes, yes. Yeah. What did you guys think and, of that? That was really neat. I thought it was very, very well put together. It was, uh, you know, anything about the, the, the golden age of wrestling is, is, you know, a fan's dream. You know, it was really cool to watch. Another thing about uh, Roddy Piper, by the way, he loved Don Owens so much when he in 85 turned – heel wrestlemania 1 85 he would still go back to portland and was a baby face for don owens and vince let him go to portland to promote the portland territory because piper had so much love for don owens that vince actually let him do that you know which was pretty cool because he was a, on wftv he was a total heel you know smashing snooker with a coconut <laughs> in, in Portland he's a baby face you know because we all loved him locally he was a hero here in the Bay Area too when he would come down yeah to yes, fight was, here in, in in the Bay Area um uh, I met Piper one time and and I said you know I'm a huge fan I said you know and I love your movies I've, I've seen hell comes to frog town and jungle ground <laughs> and he looked at me and yeah. said son you're a bigger fan of my movies than I am. And so, you know. <laughs> oh, looks like we have our third guest on the show for the evening there. Who's our third guest here? Is the Simmons? Oh, they, I was looking at the screen. I, yeah. I was looking at the screen, too, waiting for another window. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's Samantha, anyway. I can tell the difference, but but uh, yeah, <laughs> you're, anyway. you're a rock and roll loving cat. I <laughs> I know my biggest fans. <laughs> That's great. So, um, so uh, you know, I, I also I think the uh, 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 Portland Pro was the last like independent territory to close down, pretty much. Pretty much was NWA territory. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you guys, 
I think what you were on, you had been on TV, uh, or you'd been running for like 19 straight years or something like that. When you, when Portland decided to close up shop, yeah, and I, I yeah, remember the last toy toys that still existed when they were all folding back then. You know, early '90s when the, all the territories were fully. Vince took over everything. You know, obviously. I think like Texas and Florida and Portland were still hanging on a little bit. AWA was trying Memphis, but Portland was one of the last ones that still hung on until it was just all WWF. Another know. another legendary wrestler from out there, and one of my personal favorites was Len Denton uh, as the grappler. And and that was one of the early, you know, I've, I've always been a huge fan of nice. I've always been a huge fan of mass wrestlers, of that old style non-lucha type, yeah. you know, mass wrestler. To me, that's, that's what old school wrestling is all about. And were you guys big fans of Len Denton? Obviously, you have this book. Well, I, I'm friends with Lind, and I, I told you on the last time I was on your show, he helped train me before I went to APW. Remember, he, like, he got me in the ring, and I actually felt what the ropes felt like and taking bumps, and he beat the crap out of me and smartened me up before I went to the pro wrestling school in Hayward, California. And he took me under his wing, and I mean, I can call him right now. He, He's an amazing guy. I love him. He, he so much respect. Took over, he took over uh, the bad guy, the quintessential bad guy for our territory when uh, following Rip Oliver and the clan and the assassin, the grappler he was. was yeah, yeah, he, 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 was, he was the heel and uh, he was the one that everybody was screaming at and loved to hate. So um, right, I actually done deal with uh, him a few years ago. He had actually a piece of Piper's Pit for sale. And uh, he had advertised it, and I had, I had talked to him, and he wanted a lot of money for it because my my plan was to buy it for Casey so he could put it. What in was office. it? Yeah. So, but he he wanted what a was it for it. Sorry. What, what what was it? He was selling. It was what? a part. It was a part of the background of Piper's Pit, and it had some uh, memorabilia stuff on it that he got from Roddy, and but he wanted tw like twenty two hundred bucks for it. But I mean, I'm sure it was worth that all day long. Just to me, I was trying to do a a quick thoughtful. Oh, gift that's for hilarious! Me. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, can tell so I, I, I texted him a little bit on Facebook. That's that's my dealings with him. But you know, as a kid watching him, I mean, the, the guy the guy was um, he was dialed as far as a heel goes, just dialed. Oh, absolutely. He, he said he said the right things. He did the right things to make you just want to watch him again and see what he was going to do yep. and who was going to screw over. It was it was good. He was a good character. And he was just amazing. I mean, again, like he actually trained me, you know, and. <laughs> You know, beat the crap out of me. <laughs> like, you're going to California. Well, I'm going to show you how it feels in the ring before you get there. You know, pay your dues, kid, kind of thing. But uh, so much respect. But yeah, going to Piper's Pit Stop after hours, leaving the bars, always a good time. <laughs> sure, sure. Did he did he ever um, explain to you why he liked working under a mask as opposed to uh, working without one? Yeah, because. <laughs> Under a mask, you don't have to make facial expressions. You can be a heel, and you can call things in the ring <laughs> without people seeing you talk. And you know, and nobody can tell what you're really thinking. So, he, if you work the psychology the right way under a mask, like you know, being a baby face or a heel, you don't need to make facial expressions. You can just do it by punching, kicking, choking, or stomping. <laughs> Remember the, his boot? Yeah, the loaded boot. Yeah, there you go. That was a so, great gimmick. That was a great. It gimmick. made sense. Yeah, like they are in chic. Just tap the boot twice, and then you know, kick someone in the head, and you're going to get hurt. Right. Because I think he's the only other guy I remember that doing that. Apparently. That gimmick, the loaded boot gimmick, on a regular basis. You right. know, that was that was that was great stuff, and 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 you know, people always sold for it, and it was. It was always, you know, pretty entertaining. Did you guys also watch uh, Playboy Buddy Rose? Oh yeah, definitely. He he was a big part of of, of that timeline as well. You know, he uh, 
you know, with his with his custom T-shirts that he'd wear. You know, I I, I worked hard for this body and you know, <laughs> yeah, all the that stuff. Diet. Didn't he have yeah, sit up what, champion what is, as one of them? Didn't he have what, sit up champion? One of them said sit up champion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he uh, he he knew that that he wasn't a Billy Jack, you know, type of uh, physique, and he he went with it, you know, and and he was either well loved or he was well hated, whatever gimmick he was after. He was he was a great good guy and a great bad guy. He uh, he was he was well rounded. He was Literally. awesome. Literally. Very respectful business. That guy could work circles around anybody. Is because he was he'd take arm drags all day long and drop kicks and shit. You know, it was just impressive for a guy that size. He got obviously later on he got a lot bigger, but he could work with anybody. And, yeah, and I think his, with, his his feuds with Piper were pretty legendary. You know, yeah. um, I yeah. remember those. Uh, yeah, and you know, it's great having that platinum blonde hair. You know, that was a thing from the '80s, and it was just, it was cool when they'd get color, and then they've got yeah, blood and that platinum hair is great. So, you know, yeah, uh, like the Bobby Blair Jones, and the Buddy Rose, the Ric Flair's, the Dusty, they all had that blonde platinum. Buddy hair. Landell, yeah, <laughs> just, Tommy Rich, yeah, yeah. Cut Tommy up. Rich, oh yeah, Tommy was famous for, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You know, one time I saw, I was at a Beavers, Portland Beavers. It's no longer a baseball team here, but I was down at the Civic uh, Auditorium or the Civic uh, Field, and uh, we were walking to our seats, and there's Buddy Rose in one of the handicapped little uh, areas where a wheelchair goes. He's got a table set up, and he's got, you know, glossies and a Sharpie and a beer. That makes and uh, I go, holy shit, there's Buddy Rose. So I told my kids, I said, I'll be right back. <laughs> so I approached him. I go, holy crap, how's it going? And he goes, good, man. You want a picture? I go, sure. And he signs it for me, hands it to me, and he said, 10 bucks. I was like, oh. <laughs> 10 bucks. <laughs> All right. So I, I definitely paid it for his picture, and I was happy to have it. I wish I still had it. This is this is a long time ago. but uh, I was going to say, know. do you still have it? You don't have no, it. No, no, I don't. But I tell you, he, the star power enough to make me run upstairs to go say hi to him for sure. So <laughs> he was just posted up there drinking his beer and making his 10 bucks at a time. So. But no, no sign or anything. Just you want a picture? Yeah, ten bucks. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tales from the Territories kind of for me was enlightening because I didn't know how much he was involved in things like booking and and storylines. You know, hugely involved with that. Him and Don Owens were like buds, like the Grappler and you know those kind of guys. Rip Oliver, who were booking. Yeah, he, you know, he kind of reminds me of in in our context is Boom Boom Kamini. You know, I mean, not oh, as yeah. as outwardly absurdic, but Boom Boom, who I I probably didn't know him, Greg, but this was a guy over at All Pro Wrestling. I, I managed yeah. him as the uh, my ball right there, him and I in cover of the the paper. Yeah, a Boom Boom was very, you know, he was obnoxious and he was annoying, but he also was a real perfectionist in the ring. And really, I was always surprised, like when 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 he stopped joking around and he stopped pinching your nipples or stealing your food, <laughs> he 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 would actually yeah. when he would get down to like ring time, he was really yeah. like a scientist. He really like could analyze the crowd, analyze the booking, figure out what are good angles were, not just like the in ring. There's people who are good at booking stuff outside of the ring and and the storylines outside the ring. But I rarely have met anyone as good at booking things inside the ring inside, during a match yeah. as Boom Boom. Yeah, he was good. always funny too because he would like tell me, "I'm like, what are we doing tonight? You know, we're working together." And he's like, "Just follow me, kid. Listen, <laughs> just listen to me." Yeah. And we had like the best matches, you know. Just listen, you know. And I you think like this, sell it. And I'll talk to you as I pick you up by your hair <laughs> for the next spot. You know, just listen, kid. I think both I of them had this wonderful ability to just kind of ad lib, to know. To, I mean, there's people who ad lib and just fail miserably. And then there's people who just have this sense of like what it's going to sound like and look like right. in the ring. And I think Buddy was one of, you know, I, I uh, my, my ring name was also. Buddy Satello Esquire, and I always right. took, you know, like a little bit of every buddy that I could think of in wrestling, and, you know, whether it was Landell, whether it was Rose, whether it was uh, 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 Roberts, 
or whatever, and tried to add Always that. a heel. Well, I'm sorry? Always a heel. There's no yeah, buddies of anything. always a heel. And I always <laughs> tried to <laughs> cram those little bits of Buddy into Buddy Satello as well, even though my character was a lawyer from New York. I always looked at some of the things that those guys did to get over his heels and said, you know, I always want to be the consummate Buddy because... You know, wrestling just isn't wrestling without a buddy in it. And I don't know what, well, maybe that's one of the problems with the WWE right now is they just, they lack a great buddy in the, uh, in the, on their roster. <laughs> I would, I would agree with that. You're, you're right. You know, the, the, they've got to have that person where, you know, it, it, when you, when you generate an emotion out of a fan, that's when you know that your gimmick's working, whether it's, I, I'm cheering right. for you. Or I want to bean you with a brick out by your car outside the arena, you know. It, it's, <laughs> Which is it's, cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So, you know, you know, what's funny is is uh, talking about the territories. You know, Casey's got a lot of uh, old videos and tapes and VHS stuff. Um, I read somewhere that Don Owens, he uh, he had KPTV tape over all of his airings. Yes, but he rose he said he fuck it was that. too expensive. It was too expensive. So right. anybody, anybody who's shit. got these, these, these recordings, they're like gold, right? So Casey, whether or not you realize it's probably pretty valuable stuff to the right person. Yeah, no, it's true. We had the same thing happen here in the Bay Area and also in Los Angeles, where the radio, the TV stations, you know, to save money on buying new tapes. Just or, tape over it. Yeah, they tape over it or those old reel-to-reels. They're now so brittle but if you right. try to run them, they just snap in half. Right. And you can't even watch them anymore. Or they, 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 they've gotten so degraded, the, the, the powder, you know, the uh, uh, film, it's, uh, the tape itself has just gotten, you can't watch it because, you know, playing it back, just you get nothing but interference. And, you know, nobody really thought that people would be nostalgic for that sort of stuff, I think. Well, you right. Know, you know, so, uh, Vince owns all the territories. He owns all of that. Vince McMahon, all the other territories, that's where all these recordings and stuff, he's got them in archives. He just didn't have yeah. the right to Don Owens stuff because Don didn't pay for it. And there are things that, uh, what is his son, Barry Owens? Barry yes. Owens has archive stuff of some Portland wrestling and local stuff, but not to the extent that the other territories have so much of it. It's very limited. But Buddy Rose did find out about the fact that Don was tossing the tapes. Buddy Rose kept a shit ton of actual film and had it uh, re... It was sitting in a garage, from what I've read anyway. And it was uh, like kind of getting like moldy and shit. And he had it sent to somebody who had a, all the tapes re-recorded on VHS before he passed away. So I, I think his widow did Buddy that. Buddy Rose kept a ton of that stuff. Yeah, his widow did it. And the guy that, the guy that has all That's what it was. Yeah, has it all right. labeled... He has it all dated and yeah. labeled, and he was offering for me, well, anybody, to buy some. And I said, send me what you got. And then he never answered me after I said, oh, wow. And I told him I'd like to buy this. That was the email you sent me, right? Yeah, same guy. He, he never answered yeah. me as soon as he started talking about money and buying them. So I never got any. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, you think about all those memories that are still, you know, Somewhere in Those somebody's were, garage. A lot of money to the, the right collector will pay shit time for that, you know. Well, they, they were all five, ten, twenty bucks for this, this, and I was like, that's that's easy money. That's I'm in. Yeah, you know, that's I, I, right. I want this, this, and this, and then he just stopped communicating. So hopefully he's still out there somewhere and still wanting to sell that stuff. So I still have a ton of as tapes from I recorded from Portland, geez, years ago, but I still have. I'm sure somebody would like to have them. Casey and I didn't live by each other. Um, he lived in the country. I lived in the city. I would record a lot of wrestling. And uh, on the weekends, my parents owned property next to where Casey and his family lived. So I only had three channels. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would record VHS tapes of wrestling and this, that, and then I bring him down to Casey. He's probably still got those damn VHS tapes. I do. I know him. Yeah. And then remember, I went, we watched WrestleMania 3 at your house in Portland. Yeah, we were one of the first families to, to have pay per view cable, and we we yeah. uh, literally had every day the next room. Yep, yep. I still have the exact to... recording on video too. By the way, I was lucky enough to actually be at WrestleMania two in person oh, in Los wow. Angeles. So I saw WrestleMania two on close circuit 
at the Porta Coliseum, actually. Two. Right. But three, I saw at your house. That was Hogan Andre. Yeah. Yeah, and Which you know, was, there's something so special about that, especially when you, you couldn't go see it and so you had to go see it in closed circuit. You know, uh, right. that's well, where I saw, tick- That's how I saw <laughs> WrestleMania 1 was closed circuit over at the San Francisco Civic Auditorium. And just, you know, the place was packed. It was about as big as like a real wrestling event. And, you know, everyone went oh, absolutely nuts, you know, when uh, 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 Hulk Hogan wound up uh, 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 pinning Paul Orndorff for the, uh, for the, yeah. for the match. And you think I about like, oh, with the cast. The cast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're both working out. Yeah. The cast. Yeah. You think about like, you know, like well, that wasn't yeah. even a really great main event when you think about like what the booking really was all about and all that. But we all just, just, that, just to have that match at all. I mean, we're moving on to like the 50th anniversary of, yeah. of when that yeah, all happened. I know. Can you believe that? I think it was 45 years this year with, with when, when WrestleMania happened and, and, you know, uh, well, when when you had that first the brawl to settle it all and the the war to settle the score and, settle score yeah what well, city of lopper and winnie richter and all that they, they brought Mr. all Chicky. those the, the rock the rock and wrestling connection right yeah but they were that expo- and, well, mtv too i MTV. mean mtv yeah 83 84 85 it exploded yeah i had, to show, my, I had to show my 11 year old daughter um uh, uh uh rocky three and she couldn't sit through all of it because it's just n- <laughs> not her kind of thing but i i made sure she watched the Hulk hogan uh oh, yeah. versus sylvester sloan because i said there's no way you can talk about the 80s and leave out a hulk hogan b sylvester sloan and c mr t yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, if you if you try to get through the '80s and not talk about at least one of those three guys, if not all three of those guys, you're right. not going to be able to explain the '80s entirely to somebody. Right. That's that's awesome. The the ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yes. Yes. Big cape and shit. Did you ever that's see cool. um uh, Hogan when he was? In the Pacific Northwest, he spent some, he did some matches up there. I think when it was no, the, and Bunch, like he said earlier. Yeah, no, not, it was a, it was a WWF event is where Casey and I saw him and King Kong Bundy, but not not yeah. locally, nothing nothing local. He never worked the Portland Post Arena at all. Not for Don Owens, anyway. Okay, Hogan. yeah, I, I know that there were because for a long time here in the Bay Area, we were in AWA territory. You know, for yeah, the most part. Gone. So you would have seen the Cal Palace. But I never got right. to see Hulk Hogan as a um a, in the AWA. He did, when I started watching, when I started going to live events, he had already transitioned over to the WWF. But I did get to see a lot of the Road Warriors. Oh yeah, yes that that was the only reason that I would watch AWA events is because of uh, the Road Warriors over there. They they were pretty thin on on marketable talent in my opinion i i love the, the nwa more than anything that was that was what i love but um the awa awa was light on 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 talent over there but you you had to watch the road warriors well you know they had some surprisingly good talent like the road warriors like kurt henning like scott hall like rick martell like uh uh, uh mang and uh, you know, and, yeah you know, yep. they, they did. They they had the 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 rockers there for a little while. You know, Shawn Michaels, yeah. and Marty Jannetty. Marty Jannetty, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the AWA did have them, but they didn't really. You know, they're too busy pushing uh, uh, hey, Greg Gagne. Yeah, of course, Greg Gagne. What you look and you talk about a wrestling character, knowing that that he was the promoter's son and he wasn't. Right. I mean, he he could fly. He was great. He was a good in ring worker. But champion and, well, him and, the, and, him and Brunzel are the high flyers. Not me. <laughs> but Brunzel did all the hard work. He, he wasn't know. marketable. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I had a hard time with Greg Gagne. He, he bored me and he just, 
didn't have the look, <laughs> you know, when, when you're looking at, when you're talking about the eighties and you had the road warriors and you had Scott Hall and you had right. Kurt Henning, you know, right. and then you go to Greg Gagne and you were just like, Oh, okay. You yeah. know, he just sort of brought everything down. He just, he couldn't really energize an audience the way that some of these other guys did. And you could always tell that, that he was holding other guys back because he was the owner's son. And then, right. you know, that, that, that he was getting preferential treatment. It's like the, the, the kid who's always being told he can be quarterback because the uh, dad is the head coach of the team. And you're like, right. but there's other guys who'd be better quarterbacks. So, yeah. so Greg, while we don't have Casey for a minute or two, why don't you just explain a little bit about yourself and what you do right now and, 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 and some of the things that you're into? Um, well, uh, like I said, I, I met Casey when I was uh, pretty young. <laughs> because our parents knew each other and whatnot. And I'm really into, if you can't tell, uh, motorcycle racing. So, so I'm a super, super fast motorcycle guy on road racing. I don't do motocross dirt stuff anymore because I kept knocking the shit out of my head. So it's time to retire like, from all of that. Tailbone. Yeah, tailbones, all kinds of injuries. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so I, I live in a small town in Oregon called Scapoose. Um, it's outside of... <laughs> Portland, Oregon, about 30 minutes. So I get <laughs> benefits of living by the city, but also living away from the city, which is a garbage dump these days. But uh, that's that's pretty much it. You know, Casey and I, we have a lot of history with pro wrestling. Like I was kind of explaining, we, we had the rings. You know, we used to take real hard bumps together, like plywood on top of old tires. And we put on shows they, and promos. They and, put a show on for our neighbors, remember? Yeah, we sold tickets to it. It was a cage match, but we only had yes. two two sides to the cage. And we <laughs> tied with ropes. I mean, it was a real, real down and dirty ring. And and when we knew <laughs> everybody was there, our parents and everybody, so we were knocking each other hard. I mean, we yeah. we were literally injured at the end of that. So um, we we we're we're real wrestling fans, but from back when uh, you couldn't just watch it, you had to go to it or film it and they or would be awake at 11 would, o'clock on Saturday night to watch it. If not, there was no recording. There was no TiVo. There was no nothing. You, no, you, it was didn't, nothing. Didn't, it, you didn't know what happened. Hopefully a buddy or someone saw it or otherwise you just had to figure it out. Well, and that's we what I'm making belts on that long. Remember we'd make tag team belts together. Of course. Right. You know, we had to have the belts. Ran through Our a lot of oil. oil. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I always thought is one of the things that I think makes modern wrestling a little bit harder for people to get into as opposed to wrestling back in the day when we were younger is that wrestling was such a rare thing to find. And if you could find it, you had to watch it because there was no other way to see it. There was an on demand, you know, the WWE sold, you know, had like five videotapes or something like that. They were always rented right. out to Blockbuster. So, you know, yep. it was you, you, after you watched the five tapes, you pretty much were caught up with everything that was, you know, available. And and I just I remember, you know, having the sixth sense, just knowing when wrestling was on. Like people were like would always know it was like I, if we wanted to find where wrestling was, let's ask Russ and see if he knows. Because like right. I could like turn the channel and just stop and just say, That's where wrestling is. And right. like how did the you first know? of the month Going to the store and getting a wrestling magazine on the stand, like it's you know, it's the first of the month, the new magazines are gonna be out, Wrestling illustrated, you know, all that stuff. You go by the magazines. You, you could and read even though you're like two months behind. Yeah. yeah, per territory, who won what match on what day? And that was yeah. we right to the back of that the, just to the see. Rankings, what the rankings, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. that was that that was when K that was like Babe, her internet. That's when K Babe yeah. hit me the hardest. When I finally had a chance to talk to Bill after, and I said, how did you guys come up with the top 10 rankings? You know, because I figured they had charts and graphs and, and you know, polls and, and things <laughs> that would say who went over whom. And they would sit there and spend hours, you know, finding out who won which matches against whom and all that. He said, no, yeah. we usually came up with it at the water cooler like about 10 minutes before printing. We just said, she <laughs> thinks like... Cool. <laughs> they just BS around the office and they'd say, yeah, no, Dusty Rhodes is the more popular guy this week than, than Hulk Hogan or something like that. Yeah, he, how did the crowd He's pop, wrestler right? of the year. Yeah, he has a trophy wrestler of the year, most popular wrestler, most hated or whatever the, you know. Yeah, 
the, that was all just the staff just coming up with stuff. Like literally, you right. said, like right. So many last per person. The last thing they would do right before publishing, they were like, they they like, oh yeah, we have to do the top ten list. Let's just, you know, what do you think? Dusty Rhodes, we'll put Harley Race on there. We'll put uh, Ric yeah. Flair on there. You know, we'll put uh, uh, Martel on there. Actually, and that, that 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 Let's give them the plaques. <laughs> they can show the plaques off. We have put the tag team. You, you Thank know, you, fans. Those, yeah, those rankings, <laughs> though, that was real deal data to me when I was a kid. Absolutely. I, I, that, that was our thing. We would argue over number four versus number five, you know, and say there's right. no way that Harley Race is more popular than Dusty Rhodes. There's right. no way that Roddy Piper is less of a heel than the Iron Sheik, you know, right. and we, we, we they <laughs> really be almost pissed, you know, come down to blows on that. And then I found out that they didn't really care when they were in a, they were they're doing it. They just you know did it the last second. But uh, you know, I'm I'm going to be 50 years old here in another month, and uh, hearing that. Even now, bums me out that that's that wasn't real. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, my ranking data, I had it. Sure, sure, I, it meant it meant so much. Now. Right here, I can tell them to you right now. I have the magazines right here, the ones we used to buy, stacked yeah. up right here. I I have sad news. I had a huge I stack of eBay wrestling. Uh, uh, I had a huge stack of wrestling stuff, and it all got destroyed when my dad's house uh, flooded. The uh, the oh, uh, no. base flooded, and it all got thrown out, along with my Atari 800 collection. But that's that's Ooh. probably for another that's for another podcast. But uh, <laughs> um, it all hurts. <laughs> so Greg, did, is it, you did the uh, uh, the um, uh, the uh, backyard stuff. Did you ever get involved in any indie wrestling in Portland at all? You know, I didn't. I, I never did. It's you know, I I, I guarantee I could've. probably I had the grassroots ability and, and I and I could have followed Casey down that path, but you know, um yes. I, I, I just didn't. And uh I wouldn't say I'm regretful that I never tried to go after it, but you know, as far as uh fundamentals and you know the you know, a Bret Hart type of uh rest, Casey and I we went at each other and we 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 mimicked and replicated everything that we saw and we lived it i mean yeah sure we were young and whatever we didn't have any formal training he obviously went on to have formal training but uh i think uh i think that uh, i i've probably been uh submitted or tossed or taken a hard <laughs> shot more, probably more than most people who are non-professional wrestlers i i'm probably ranked up there with uh some some, some of the most experienced un, un unofficial yeah, there you go. It's funny that you, you say that too, because when you said said about us like working together and stuff, we actually worked like psychology in the ring. Like you know, we did arm drags for a reason, not just to do one. You know, we like we had worked stuff out together, and we took heavy bumps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we we did. But we pulled a sword when we wrestled. And yeah, in ring stuff, you 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 pull a move off, and you turn to the crowd. Yeah, we 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 did all that stuff. We wanted yeah. to be. Still Those it. guys, yeah, right. we got it. It's Greg, like we got, was, like, we got it. Yeah. Greg, what was your reaction when you found out that Casey had joined a pro wrestling uh, group down in uh, uh, California? You know, so just on that, Casey and I lost contact for a while. Um, that that was a thing. I, my my honeymoon when I got married to my wife years ago got a uh, storm hit um, the Bahamas. So we didn't get to leave. So we had to stay local. So I went to seaside for a week with my wife and I was sitting in a bar having a drink and Casey's mom walked by me <laughs> and I said, holy shit. And I freaked out and I spent the rest of the night with her and my wife and stuff. And then Casey and I connected again. And of course, that's when I started learning about how he took his love for Motley Crue and rock music and drumming and went and did something with it. And then also the really cool part is that he actually went on to be a wrestler and, uh, you know, and he still looked exactly the same as when I parted ways with him back whenever that was. So it looks exactly the same now. Yeah, he like does. Years he, he, later. Yeah, yeah, he does. So he, he's got he's got a thing. So, you know, don't, <laughs> I one time I saw him, he pulled his hair back and he put it in a hat like this. And I was looking at him and looking at him and I was like, mm, I did on this. don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, it, it, you're supposed to have. Anyway, you're supposed to smell like props, It was nice of you to say the props. I remember you telling about when you met my mom. You didn't see her, and you said, "Holy shit!" You know, 
what's Casey up to and stuff, and we reconnected. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you That's, said, I I was not surprised. And in that bar too that you met my mom, there was a picture of me on the in the bar. Yeah. On the, like second holding a belt up and stuff. Yeah. And you're like, holy, yeah. sh he made he's doing it. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, that it warmed my heart knowing that uh, all the stuff that we used to to live and love that he went on and and uh, did it did it. And he so. came to Astoria and watched me actually wrestle. Remember Astoria? I did. Yeah, actually, I I've only seen him do the work, belt, right? work one time. Yeah, and he he was uh, with the Metal Express. And, yeah, uh, with CC Poison. Yeah, yeah, CC Poison. Yeah, so it was pretty neat watching yeah, that. So he actually did see me wrestle in person. Yep. That was, that, cool. that was that was at the end of it, of his run, you know. But I, I got to see him yeah. when he was still he was still high flying and jumping over top ropes outside the ring, and it was it was uh, it was cool to see. Casey and I had great feuds. Where I, I think that our feuds yeah. were one of the best during the time frame of when we were in APW. It was great. He he teamed up against he fought up against Mark Smith, who was uh, my guy, and I put a mask on him just like you know. The days of the grappler. That's and, a destroyer, you know, right? Yeah, super destroyer two thousand. Super destroyer right. two thousand. Yep. Yeah. And and the, yeah, we we pretty much did uh, uh, matches in pretty much every venue in NorCal that we that APW regularly wrestled at. I think you know we. But it was funny. Like he would throw me out to the floor, and and he would come around the the ring post. I knew he's going to kick me in the stomach. You know, I'm I'm selling it. Like I'm getting up. The little weasel manager gimmick, you know, and boom, keep me. I'm like, you little bastard, I'm gonna give you a receipt later on. And I will give you credit, you never like hauled off on me during that time, but you no, would always get me on the dive out. So you would, no, you would, you would get back at me with the dive out. I always protected you. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And I always made sure that Mark got the, the brunt of the, of the, yeah, well, of course. Of the dive out because weighed 285 pounds, so of course she's right. Like, and I, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm a lot more delicate than, uh, than, than Mark was. My receipt to you was trying to buy you a shot of double Jack Daniels at the bar later on that night. No, we had a lot oh, of fun. That was really a, a lot, a really good time, and I, that's why I love having you back on the show again. Is that we can relive a few of those things and and talk about those things and and so i i want to know since both of you guys are such good old school souls what are the things that you miss the most about old school wrestling right now psychology telling a story in the ring you, you, go you ahead know, you want to hear something weird is, is i was just thinking about this the other day when i was watching some old stuff and and uh so and so pops off on so and so, and three guys jump on him, and they're beating on him, and all of a sudden the boys from the back all come out. What I miss the most: everybody shirtless, wearing jeans and cowboy boots, just and like you, you, you don't see them like that. You know they came from the a back. Pier back. Six That's brawl, a Pier Six. Yes, yeah. yes. That's what <laughs> yeah. like, Earl Monson would call the Pier yeah. Six brawl. That's it, and and they they're it's like whoa, they all went in there and took off their their gimmicks, and they they all just wore jeans and. Uh, skin boots and they all came charging out there to save whoever it was i mean and you know watching that the footage of that those does dark, make sense though you know you see you see the road warriors like you see them on wcw um and i mean wcw is as far as superstation tbs back there in the small studio not the big ted turner thing um back in right. the day they're, they're, who's gonna beat these guys no one stan stan hansen goes and finds Bugsy McGraw. Oh, now somebody, now we've got a team are going to beat these guys. Well, it's not televised. Or the Colts. Dark, it's the a Keaton dark Ivan. Somewhere, and you get to see just a, a little bit of dark footage of them stomping the shit out of those guys. And you as a kid going, oh, no, they didn't win. And then you see them <laughs> back on, you know, on the TV event. You know, you send these guys after us and blah, you know, and you're like, wow. And that, that's what I miss. Instead of just full disclosure about you just know everything about the business, I miss – just not knowing about stuff where you just kind of got to go, whoa, what, what's going on? Right. right. Yeah. Casey, yeah. what about you? Well, what you just said again, but I, I again, I, I'm in psychology telling a story and making things believable. Even when you're in the front row, if you're a fan, um, don't do a working punch, hit somebody in the fucking head, <laughs> but tell a story, you know, make the people I don't like when they show backstage footage, kind of like what you were saying a little bit, I think, Greg, um, 
the backstage footage and stuff of them like talking and stuff. Like you said the road warriors have come out and just beat the shit out of everybody and like you're like, fuck, who's gonna beat these guys? That's the kind of thing I miss too, with where you you actually believe that shit's going down, you know. Yeah. Who's gonna beat these guys? I love that K Fabe psychology. I, I miss that. Right. If that makes any sense. Where you tell a story, you know. And I, I kind of miss the over the I mean, K Fabe has sort of ruined the death of K Fabe has sort of ruined this, but I mean guys like like the missing link and the grappler <laughs> and the one yeah. game game. Kamala. <laughs> and Kamala. Guys that, yeah. you know, were just too crazy. <laughs> for, for for the barbarian, you know the warlord. Oh, you know. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, or, or, or Rosa Brody, the Huss, Huss. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, guys that would just <laughs> be means, so out know. of control that you would just be, but you'd believe it because they they looked so incredibly insane. And they should have shit. Yeah. Or you just you'd really believe it that they would be the kind of guys that would go into a bar and clear the whole place out. You know, and 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 then have you know beer right after kicking you know the the toughest guys out of the bar. You know, they would sit on the pool table and have a beer together. You know that. Yeah, I'm in the bar and Bruiser Brody comes walking in. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, or at least pay his tab. At least right. offer pay his <laughs> yeah, tab. Whatever. One See of how he's doing. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But you know, I, I just. You know, you just uh, and and it it, it kind of sucks that everyone uses their real names now. You know, that was always like something that that I always kind of liked is that everybody had you know, and everyone had a pseudonym of like the Crusher or you know, uh, 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 fabulous or 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 magnificent or you know something like that. Nobody has like that. So so few people call themselves anything like that. You know, Greg the Hammer. Valentine, for instance, you know, right. you don't have someone calling themselves a nickname anymore, or the Polish Hammer, or or the Body, or something along those lines. You know, those that sort of thing is gone, and I, and that that was something that I think always made wrestling a little bit different than say you know football or baseball or basketball. You didn't have so many nicknames, but everybody in wrestling had a nickname, and and. And they and they they believed in it, you know. They, they their nickname helped shape who they were in the ring, and and you don't really see that right now. And and I think that's, that's something black. I was trying to say, like we all believed in it. Even like it's like watching a movie. You suspend disbelief for a, a minute, you know. Freddy Krueger is not actually slicing somebody to pieces, you know. Rip Oliver is not actually killing Billy Jack. <laughs> but I, I thought he was that moment. But for that moment, though, you're into it. So that's, again, like we brought up, that's kind of what I miss about wrestling. I watch it now. I can't just. It's just not the same. Because people don't work up to a finisher anymore. You know, finishers are now like part of chain wrestling. Like, you you know, you'll have a guy. What the heck is that? Yeah, Yeah, you'll you'll have a DDT move into a powerbomb. Move into yes. a, a, a 420 press, work into, yeah. you know, uh, and then then the guys will wind up pinning some guy with a move that you're like, well, if he kicked out of all these other moves, why is he the going to take down? Yeah, why is he <laughs> going to go down with a clothesline? You know, if he already, you know, went through three burning tables in a power. Yeah, it's the same. Flaming table, yeah, big deal. And he Walk kicks out. out what? You know, but then, the deal? Uh, then, arm bar. then you do a super kick. And the guy, you know, acts like he's been shot with a bazooka and falls down. Yeah. And you're like, well, how did, how does that, you know, they don't seem to have a priority of like building. What I thought the old, was great in the oh, older days yeah. is they build up to the finishing move. You know, like Greg the Hammer Valentine before his uh, figure four leg lock would really work, the, work the knee. Yeah, work the leg, work the knee. You know, uh, the Andersons as the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. You know, they'd always work that left arm before, you yeah, know. Yeah, getting that hand to arm to, to Oli and back to Arn and back to Oli, and he's still got the guy. <laughs> yeah. It's just and that then doesn't the, work anymore. Yeah, the knee drop off the second rope. Oli would do the knee drop, you know, on the arm. Move his, move his knee. Ricky Morton would way. sell the hell out of it, like he was just killing. You know, Ricky Morton was the best at selling. How about how about Those. the hammerlock body slam? 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You don't see that anymore, you know. And yeah. and, and they would, Jones. yeah, they would work up to it, and then you'd really believe that the guy had to submit because his arm had been worked on all that time, you yeah. know. And it hurts. Well, yeah. That, if that it was a job, or his arm did hurt. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it did. I'm ask sure the, it did. Ask the Mulkies. Yeah, <laughs> toughest, toughest guys in the biz, right there. Oh, so, can you believe it, guys? We are almost at the end of the hour. It's All unbelievable. Right. It's like you know, it it goes by so quickly. I want to give you guys to mention any uh, social media sites or anything that you guys are any projects that you're working on, uh, so that our fans can can follow you. Greg should with your bike things that you always send me your those videos of you you gotta put that over man you, you, you it's can, amazing what he's doing yeah it just you know I'm, I'm a 50 year old guy road racing you know going super he's fast badass yeah well I'm, I'm trying so we'll uh just just i'm on facebook or instagram you can catch me there greg famel and i put some videos up that i do nothing nothing spectacular nothing crazy but maybe a little crazy but Bullshit, he's lying. He's badass. He's on this speedway going, how fast are you going around the corners when he's wiping out and shit? Um, I mean, <laughs> depends on the corner, you know, 100 miles an hour or whatever. I tripped over my kid's yeah. scooter at the beginning of uh, COVID lockdown, <laughs> and I broke my left shoulder. So so, so to be said that, that I'm, uh, you know, when someone says they're going 100 miles per hour, and 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 the falls over, then that really impresses me because I almost killed myself going point oh 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 five miles per hour, you know. Well, I, yeah. I've got on Facebook. I'll send you a couple of videos when we disconnect. I've got. Oh, some that's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. And and Casey, what have you got going on? What what agenda? I got nothing to pr promote, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, don't you have any band stuff going on? I'm going to say no. Well, hopefully, you know, now that COVID is kind of, you know, lifting, I, I think that people are starting to want to see more live events again, not just wrestling. But I got three offers from three different bands, but I'm not uh, too excited about going and playing. I like being home. I'll just leave it at that for now. Oh, you know, my brother never stops performing. He's he's a bassist, so he's 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 getting more and more gigs called for more and more gigs now, because people are are wanting to put parties together. And with you know three years off, people oh, have really yeah. you know built up sort of a pent up desire to get out there and, and socialize again. So, but I hey, did want to give a shout out to um, um, MTH Championship belts. And uh, Faisal Championship belt. Oh, Because they are sending me a bunch of stuff. Yeah, you said you were getting some new ones, but they didn't come in in time. They'll be here within a week. So but I do want to give a shout out. I told them I would because they're sending me a bunch of belts. So what? what's their website? Um, MTH Championship belts and... Uh, Faisal little championship belts. I, it's a weird name. I can't even explain it. If you want to, on, you, can, uh, you can post my, uh, it on our on our Facebook site. On Facebook, you'll see it on my Facebook. Casey Wood. That's Facebook. great. Yeah, and and uh, do you have the Pacific Northwest belt nearby? Yep. He's wearing it. Pat, I would. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him. That thing is a beautiful. Uh, that's one of my all time favorite belts. Is the Pacific and, Northwest Red Championship? And the TV one too. That one's great. That one's great, but that that one is legendary. The one that you're you're holding right now is is I just love the yeah, design that's... of it. I love the, the 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 shape of it. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's not overly again, ornate. I made this when I was ten years old. Wow, that is nice. That is nice. How did it feel when you were ten Ray years was old? There. <laughs> You know, I you, I can wore this. Yeah, and 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 then to actually buy the real belt. How did it feel to 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 buy the real thing? Pretty cool. It is. It <laughs> is. It's you know I yeah. I, when you have a championship belt and it's it a real be one, in my house. I got it. So that's pretty cool. Yes, that's that's great stuff. And and certainly, I'm, you, a, I'm a belt lock. 
you're you're a champion in my eyes. And you're a champion in, in lots of other people's eyes. So really appreciate it. So anyway, um, we're gonna wrap things up for this week. Um, certainly like to add, Greg. You're you're a lot of fun, and 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 we'll probably do another one of these uh, uh, Pacific Northwest Remembrance uh, 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 shows. You know, especially if someone important passes away, which I hate to say it is in wrestling. You know, I'm surprised we actually went a week without hearing news of somebody important dying. That's a, our show is usually. 50% of our shows are dedicated to some wrestling legend dying the week right. during our show. We but, yeah, right. but, uh, but we'd love to have you on. Thank you. You know, be safe in, in riding your bike around and, and, and don't trip over it like I managed to. And, uh, 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 you know, we'd love to have you back on the show again as a future guest. Same with you, Casey. You're a lot of fun, and uh, it's always great to reconnect with you. Anytime, brother. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it, bud. All right, guys. Have a great week. We'll see everyone next week. Goodbye, everyone. Awesome. Good night. Thank you.